you know about Merlin? He lived his life backwards. Huh? Yeah, he apparently lived his life backwards, didn't he? What he are you was talking old. about? He old and then he became young and died. That's Benjamin Button. No, that's Merlin. You look it up. What? Merlin lived backwards. I've, I've never heard that story. It's a fact. I've, I saw it in one of the films How about did that Merlin. Work? Well, he was he... born as an old man. Yeah, but what? But a small old man, or did a full-size old a man? Full-size kind of, old man for that out of a his, woman. Out of his mum's uh, chuff, chuff me borrow. <laughs> and then he got younger and younger and younger until he became a baby, and then went up a completely different woman's chuffer. <laughs> Back up. Yeah. <laughs> well, she, she didn't know. That's just, I wasn't expecting any of that. Well, you uh, asked me what I knew of Merlin, and that's what I know of Merlin. I wasn't talking about that Merlin, you dummy. You oh. big dummy. What other Merlins are there? I this, don't know of any. This one, uh, which some very kindly gave to me at Digitizer Live. Oh. Uh, I've forgotten who it was. I'm sorry. Please uh, co- it, comment below and yeah. we'll thank you it personally. It was the end, the end of a quite a long day. Very. Stroke year. Very uh, long day, stroke yeah. year. So sorry that I forgot who you are, but thank you to you. Uh, and... We're going to just have a little look at it, aren't we? Yeah, we are. I've never... I, honestly, I don't know too much about Merlin. I... I was always intrigued by it as a kid. I had mates who had it, but I, I never played it. Because the thing for me is it always looked like a kind of high-tech It does, phone. doesn't it? It looks like, yeah. you know, uh, buy, sell, buy. But it came out prior to mobile phones being a thing. And car phones, so. which they were originally. 78, invented by some NASA astronaut, I think. Really? His wife, I think. Some, or someone that worked for NASA and his wife, which uh, and who sold it, the idea to Parker Brothers. You know Parker Brothers? I do know a Parker Brothers, but uh, this company says in here, Palatoy. Yeah, because Palatoy sold all the American stuff over here. Oh, they were just a distributor of American toys in the UK. Yeah, it was Palatoy that did uh, Star Wars in Europe. Oh, what, the uh, action figures? No. Yes. Really? Yeah, it was Kenner in America, and over here... It was it, Palatoy. It was Palatoy, yeah. That's why I have a Palatoy t-shirt. Not on today. Not on today. Not on today. It's not on today. <laughs> Palatoy did all the Doctor Who toys in the 70s. Oh, all the, oh yeah, all the Tom Baker stuff. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And the TARDIS that you could turn the thing yeah, around and he would turn yeah. around. All that. Yeah, it's so good. That I stuff. got that from uh, up a ladder. My Why? friend's house. You dropped the TARDIS off a ladder? Yeah, by accident. I Why? I taking it up there because I was making it fly up high and I dropped it on Christmas Day. That's what happened to the doctor, didn't he? He went up a ladder and fell and regenerated. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, I don't know. Did he? Maybe. Are you thinking of Logopolis, that episode? Yeah, yeah, when Tom Baker climbed up the, um, what tower was it? Well, Crystal Palace. It's not Crystal Palace. It was Ali Pali, wasn't it? No, now you're thinking of the episode with David Tennant where he went up. No, he went up that as well. He, they, doctor Who has been up that twice. And that's not true. Tom that's, Baker no, fell off Tom it. Baker Tom Baker fell off it in Logopolis. No, Tom Baker, It was that was the Pharos project he was up. In it wasn't. It was the Ali Pali it Tower. It wasn't. It was. It was Jodrell Bank for a start. This. It was Jodrell Bank radio what, telescope. What did the fourth Doctor fall off to his death? But it was the Pharos Project telescope. I'm not wrong. I know. Why are you even bothering to try and argue about because this with I me? I disagree. I am a Doctor Who I, nerd. You're not though. It was the Master had sent a, a broadcast to wipe out. A third of the universe or something. A third Doctor radiation blood loss. Fourth Doctor fell off a telescope. Yeah, so not Ali Pally. Um, the Doctor fell off a telescope and he fell off a telescope. So basically everything I said. A telescope called the Pharos Project. Am I am I wrong? But I thought that was literally the tower that he fell off. That was the Ali Pally t- tower. No, it's completely different looking. You must have heard of Jodrell Bank. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big dish telescope. But right. it wasn't a big dish in it. It was just a big tower. It was a big dish, for God's sakes! I don't like this. Unbelievable! You're gonna, like you're this. gonna upset the Doctor Who fans. The you think I don't care about them. But why, why are you? Oh, so the new Doctor can't be the original protegator of the Time Lord race. I shan't stand for it. Con- Doctor Who contradicts itself every few years because who fucking cares? It's Doctor Who. Reboot it, refresh it, redress it, repaint it. It don't matter. It's still a person in a phone box going around the universe having fights with Tim Pot, Johnson, Pepper, Jeff, Paul. <laughs> right out of words. Then, then why are you getting so irate about? Being correct about this. It's, I just I'm don't just, even bother looking it up. I'm right. I just I just confused. I thought he fell off the Ali no. Ali Pali Tower. No. 
Because I was going to say, it's like... The Acropolis. Thought... All right, okay. Is, I just is... thought it was the ta- it was the tower. Well, you can keep saying that, maybe but it's it was not. The, that, maybe that's where they filmed it. But it wasn't no, there. they didn't. They filmed it at Jodrell Bank. Jodrell Bank. That's no such a word. They, oh, for God's sake. Jodrell Bank's not a word, ladies Look, and gentlemen. He's making it up. They filmed it at Jodrell Bank, and they called it the Pharos Project. Look, I'm showing you it. What tower did the Thorf Doctor fall off? Doc, Jodrell Bank, Doctor Who. Look it up. Uh, uh, right. Oh, he's talking about the Doctor Falls now. I don't care about that. Look, there, there, that's not Ali Pally, is it? That's where Logopolis, look, see? Oh, fuck this. <laughs> <sighs> Merlin. Anyway, Dan- David Tennant fell off the Dollarable Bank. He didn't fall off. No, he, he didn't did. fall off the Ali Pally one. He did, he fell off the Ali Pally one. No, he didn't. He definitely fell off the Ali Pally one, because the whole did. film, no episode set in Muswell Bloody Hill, isn't it? He didn't fall off it. He did. He went, ah. He didn't fall off it. Uh, do you know why I know that he didn't fall off it? And Myra like, Hindley was the ghost Mark, in the machine Mark or something. Mark Gatiss, the yeah. writer of that episode, yeah. the, the, wanted to put in a reference to Logopolis and he wanted to have the Doctor go, oh, I don't like antennas. Yeah. And 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 he fell off it. And he didn't fall off he did, it. He went, ah, and he fell and he hurt his he ankle. Die. And no, he didn't fall off it as much. Didn't fall off it at all. He did. Doctor's always falling off stuff. He's useless. <laughs> Merlin. Doctor Who. Well, funny you should say that. Why? Because Doctor Who is Merlin, isn't he? Oh, yes. Don't she? I, I believe Doctor Who is... Has been Merlin? Yes. In, in a, time? In, a, in an alternate universe. Was that in the books, though? Where it doesn't really count because everyone who wrote the books was crazy. No, it was in the episode Battlefield. Or the story Battlefield. Oh, yes. That's right. Like that's ben the uh, seventh Doctor. Yes, that's yeah. correct. It's a good one, that, with the, with the Brigadier. It, it gets a bit of a bad rap, but I quite like it. I like the Seventh Doctor. Full stop. He was my Doctor growing he, up. He was my he was my second Doctor, as in I had two eras of when I was really loved Doctor Who, and it was it was Tom Baker and then Sylvester McCoy's. What did you not like about Davison or Baker? I, I or didn't. Baker? I didn't dislike about Davison. It was fine. I watched it. Yeah. But it was during the Sylvester McCoy era that I became like a. I suppose you call it Hoovian. Oh, a Hoovian. Even though I've never gone to kind of any of those kind nah, of conventions I wouldn't. and stuff. I wouldn't. When I was a little kid, uh, there was a thing in Liverpool called the Garden Festival. Oh, yeah. Where it was like a special... Uh, I don't know. They opened this whole big development up that had parks and themes. But anyway, they had a BBC tent. Oh, yeah. And in the BBC tent, they had a great big Doctor Who exhibition. So oh. there was like a Doctor... There was a TARDIS and a D- Dalek and all the Cybermen. And cool. it was cool. Oh. And I got to touch the the uh, Tardis but they also had a yellow submarine from Beatles yellow submarine but what but why would they have that That because it's Liverpool isn't it yeah but it was an animated thing yeah but the whole park was sponsored by different things and bobs and boobs so I think the BBC probably had their own little tent that put money into it but the yellow submarine was there just because Beatles so you could go inside the yellow submarine and pull a thing and then you'd hear voices from the film you know uh, Sanya's granddad was an animator on that that's come up before briefly, and you said there was a cell on the wall or something. Was, yeah, no, of the Animation Beatles cartoon. Cell. Do you remember in the sixties there was a Beatles that cartoon yeah. series, and yeah, Sanya's granddad had loads of cells of the, from the cartoon. Oh, that's cool. Though. That is cool yeah. though. I don't think he realised quite how much they're probably worth. they prob- <laughs> Does he still have them? Uh, or are they still well, in I existence? Don't, he's not alive anymore. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> but well, are they still in, they still in the. Uh, I don't know. They the, probably are. Probably. Are. Still alive. Yeah. <laughs> the they're useless time. they're useless you don't want them <laughs> then the next thing you do you cut to here on cash in the attic yeah. <laughs> we have actually he gave us some cells of the um, what was the film was it Prince Valiant animated film uh, no, of Prince Valiant that. that was Prince Valiant wasn't it he gave us some cells from that see uh, the thing is the Elton Marie the Beatles movie is probably one of my favourite things it's probably in the top 10 oh, movies it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant. I, I, think, I mean, don't get me wrong, they're all kind of really interesting films, but when it comes to, like, imagination and what I like in a film, it's like, the yeah. Marine is perfect. Yeah. Argentina? Yes. Max? All that stuff. Well, who's that? I've got a hole in my pocket. Yeah. All that stuff. You know, it was, um, what's his name? Eddie Yates from Combination Street. Yeah. Did, did, Paul uh, McCartney. Paul McCartney. Yeah. Robert Zemeckis was going to remake it, and he had Peter yeah. Serafanowicz down for most of the Beatles. Yeah, I think I read that. It was going to be a CGI thing. Yeah, it wouldn't have been very good. What's the point? What's the point of that? The, it, it, the joy of it is that there's the 60s of it. Yeah. yeah. And the, the hand-drawnness. Yeah. Drawnness of it. 
Yeah. We're not going to get to talk about that in this episode. I've got Mate, a feeling. Well, we've done videos before where we spoke for 20 minutes before going, it's Simple Simon, and then moving on. This is part of the course. This is old school. Yes, it's old school. We can't do this and digitise a series too. We've got to get straight to it. Really? We you can't think, you think that's going to happen? Yeah. Well, we're going to have <laughs> one whole half hour episode where we argue about what Doctor Who fell off. <laughs> What fell off Doctor Who? Yeah, <laughs> his hand did. No, do you, have you thought about this? Doctor Who's hand. Is no, he's like when he it's turned winky. into Jodie Whittaker. Yeah. What happened to it? It just disappeared, didn't it? Yeah, but how does it disappear? Does it disintegrate? Does it go up? Well, the whole body, like, just goes up in flames, and so it just kind of cleanses everything, doesn't it? Burns it all off and leaves a new skin underneath. I, it's that I, kind of thing. As a kid, I did used to think about the whole process of it because it's like sometimes his hair would be longer than before. Yeah, but why? What, what could be worse, right? You're Tom Baker, you look down and you go, oh, what a chonky honker that is. Peter Davison rolls up, he's like, oh, it's all gone little. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's. let's it's a bit of a crapshoot, this what generation. Do we, what do we reckon? The, who had the biggest per, dick yeah, out of out, all the doctors? Who you Pertwee. You I think Pertwee? John Pertwee had the biggest swinger. Then, then Tom Baker. Tom Baker, probably. But he was always like the Rasputin of Who for me. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? Devilish and well hung. Yeah. And had his, you know, he got away with did murder. Did he play Rasputin in something? Yes, he did. I've got a feeling he did. I think it was a film he did before he did Who. Yeah. And then he didn't make a lot of money after that oh, and then became a brickie Well, he was a in a Sinbad, wasn't he? Yes. Um, so, all right, so, okay. All right, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to say, yeah, Pertwee. He had it. Pertwee had a quiet confidence about him. Yeah. Although I think. But he was like the action yeah. star. He was like the Jason King who, wasn't he? Yeah. And Department he liked, liked or whatever vehicles, it is. though. So was that compensating for something? Yeah, Bessie. Yeah. The Who-mobile, which flew off. Yeah, but... Did what he, was the other in one? The, uh, in Planet, Planet of the Spiders, there's an episode where it's just literally, because they're kind of going, it's his last episode, last story. Yeah. Uh, and they're just basically going, oh, let's just please John in this. And so they give him about like 10 different versions yeah. of modes of transport. He goes from one to the other. There's a whole episode whole <laughs> where it looks like he's doing a relay race. Yeah, it's like bizarre. It's weird. Hovercraft to little helicopter thing. To Bessie, <laughs> to a bike, to skateboard, to hoverboard, yeah, yeah. trapeze. <laughs> he did it all. Segway. Yeah, because he did like his action, didn't he, Pertwee? He did like his yeah. action. Yeah, yeah. Right, so we got Pertwee Baker. All right. Are we ranking them in dick size, like yeah, from biggest to littlest? Yeah, biggest to littlest. Oh, I uh, wouldn't want to be the person who says whatever the littlest is. Well, it's Jodie Whittaker. Well, no, because there's not one at all there, is there? So it okay. doesn't count. Um, I would say the littlest penis probably belongs to... Isn't that... To... Do you remember that show? Hot there's nope. a voice. <laughs> Call it <laughs> down to me. me. Until down tomorrow, the I'll just keep dangling. <laughs> <laughs> the littlest knobbo. <laughs> That's what we've come to. Yeah. Right, uh, so uh, biggest penis to smallest. Uh, so I reckon... Pertwee Baker. I reckon Colin Baker. Do you think? I think so. I think his arrogance overcompensated for his average size. Really? But you could say the same about Pertwee and his obsession with cars. I reckon it's Eccleston who had the next biggest plonker. Oh, sorry, Eccleston. Of course it is. Eccleston has Sorry, a, I forgot about Eccleston. A Roman nose of a cock. Yeah. yeah. He had a bigger than me. Yeah, and then I'd say Tennant. Uh, the tenant was a lover man, and you can't get to be a lover man without showing you've got the engine to run off. I don't know, I've just got a feeling he's average. Yeah, well, we're into the middle area now anyway of penis sizes, aren't we? I, in my head, Capaldi, he has a really long, slender one, like a pencil. Like a wand, <laughs> like, like, like a magic wand. <laughs> like a pencil. Yeah. Uh, but like long, like, you know those uh, novelty pencils you could get that were like. Really yeah, yeah, long. yeah. <laughs> I was thinking more like a pretzel pret stick or something, you know. <laughs> what, for Capaldi? Yeah, his, his penis uh, looks like E.T.'s finger. It's that kind of look. <laughs> why do you think he's always doing that at the camera? <laughs> why, why do you think? All right, so hang on, I've got confused I got, now. we got... We got... <laughs> we got... Pertwee? Per, no, it was Pertwee, Pertwee Baker, Baker, Eccleston... Eccleston. Capaldi? I reckon Capaldi. He's long and thin. All right. Um, um, then Tennant. Oh, Paul, then Tennant. Then Paul McGann. Paul McGann. But, um, he's very sure. He's very slight, Paul McGann. Just, just saying. Not that small men can't have large... Wings. Pleasurable tools to work with. But I'm just saying overall body size. Davison didn't have a, a sonic screwdriver, so he didn't need to compensate with that, did All he? All right, let's say Davison. 
after Tennant. Yeah, Davis and Tennant, which makes sense. Uh, so now we're down into we're into the little ones now, aren't we? Wait, yeah. Did you add McGann or he's not? No, nah, well, we were debating middle. because he's he's quite short. He's like really short, McGann. Yeah, but Doesn't I mean anything. I okay. think his penis is like a pig's. It's kind of like curly, <laughs> like his hair. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like his Got hair. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, I love Mc, uh, you know McCoy, but he must have a little todger. Yeah, he's got to have a little stumpy. I one. think. I think. Uh, I hope none of these oh. actors ever watch this video, even I, just in passing. I hope I never get uh, put forward for writing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of phallic imagery in this episode you've written, Mr. <laughs> Rose. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi. Oh, it's funny though. It's yeah. all right though, because like they always, they're, I'm sure Tennant did a bit of piss taking, and Capaldi always yeah. wrote letters, well, and well, Chris Chibnall did nothing but complain about Doctor Who when he was a teenager. Right. But Billy and then Pi made the most boring version of the show ever. Billy Piper's nickname for David Tennant was David Tenninch. No, it genuinely was. That's true. He goes right to the top. That <laughs> was genuinely. Well, that explains why John Barrowman used to get it out. He was over. He was worried about that, wasn't it? There's uh, there's someone else who used to do that in television. That uh, it <laughs> used to do it as well. Apparently, in his production meetings for his film. Okay, I wasn't going to mention the name of the person. Oh, and we we'll cut this out, though, aren't we? All right, oh, well, I'll say it was because um, it was in. Uh, I read a biography of him. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, he used to get his out all the time. Doesn't surprise me. And flash people. Why yeah. do people do that? It's just weird. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't even let Sanya see mine. No. <laughs> and yet, and yet, I'm sick and tired of seeing it. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, two in the morning, getting a WhatsApp image from you. The Dormouse is sleeping. Just like, no, I don't put any text on it when I send it to you. <laughs> yeah, from a mystery admirer. Uh, uh, okay, no, we've forgotten uh, We've forgotten Colin Baker, and I think Colin Baker's got to be bigger than uh, McGann. No, you put Baker first. No, there's, there's two, two bakers, bakers. Tom and Colin. Oh, God. Colin's number six. So oh, Tom's anyway, he's second, not first. Yeah, so yeah. Colin Baker probably falls towards the bottom. No, he's quite tall. He's taller than... Mc... I think he's I think he's bigger than McGann. All right, then we'll put him one above McGann. He had a confidence about him, Baker, when he was... I always felt him. really sorry for him because Me he too. was a bit like the Timothy Dalton of the of the Doctor yeah. Who's, where I feel like he went in wanting to be the best Doctor, yeah. wanting to be with it for as long as he could and really loved it. Unfortunately, Jonathan Nathan thingamajiggamy, whatever his name is, Taylor? Jonathan Nathan Turner. Turner. He, he, he'd gone mad at that point, I think, and like completely paralyzed any sense of joy in that character by making him weird and officious and it was mean. uh yeah it was it was a mistake and by all accounts i think one that with hindsight everyone would agree was a mistake and but they uh, baker is good on in big finish no he's, he's amazing a, in the big finish yeah, ones he's, and that's, a, he's put himself kind of he's able to bake the character how he always wanted it yeah uh, and he's a he's a good actor he seems like a really sweet lovely man he got stiffed tv wise and came at the wrong period yeah because w w the michael grade stuff but i don't know i never hated him but i do when you watch his episode back they come across as kind of mean spirited there's a bit some really nasty. nasty dark stuff in vengeance there. on varos yeah i know which is just yeah. unnecessarily cruel all the way through the dalek one violent yeah. balls yeah i um with alexi sale yes uh, yes uh what was that one? It wasn't Remembrance. It was... Uh, uh, r r revolution? R r no. Re resolution. Resurrection, no. It might be Resurrection. No, there was a whole... There was a sort of biblical kind of trilogy. Uh, uh, resurrection was Davison. Yeah, that was the really violent one as well, with all the cops being killed. Revelation. Yeah, that was yeah. Well, that was when it sort of all started to get a bit nasty. The best ones were Coy's though, Remembrance, isn't it? Oh, Remembrance, Remembrance the is, is that was the one balls. of the classic series. Yeah, that's the episode I would show to like my kids and stuff like yeah. that to get them into it and as uh, people often point out and I'm not the first to say it, it's like during the last season of McCoy it got very Russell T Davisy. yeah in well, terms of like Ace and things like that but that was what was so I can't believe we just done a Doctor Who episode uh, that was what was so good about uh, Rose the episode Rose the first one when it came back with Russell T Davies because yeah. it felt like a continuation from 
the McCoy, the McCoy era. Yeah. Uh, revelation of the Daleks. Revelation of Told the you Daleks. Was, Told you it was biblical. Yeah. Although they kind of overplay the Daleks now. I'm kind of tired of seeing them. Uh, I still think there's life in them. Yeah. But I don't think... Uh, what what classic villain would you like to write Doctor Who? Oh, any Or would you invent vision. one? I'd like to invent one. Uh, I've got an idea about a villain as well. Yeah, go on. So, I don't know the science because Doctor Who is not really proper science, but you know like when you stare at a coat and sometimes it looks like, <laughs> looks like a ghost, right? Yeah. I was yeah. thinking about creatures that only exist once you lock onto their form. So, like, if you walk past and then a coat and a chair and a thing all sync up, then they become the thing. Oh, that's a good idea. You know what See, I mean? when you look at it from a different angle and then when from a certain angle, it's, it locks it's into its real shape. And then it comes after you. That's very Doctor Who. Isn't it? Yeah. Because Moffat was like, do you like shadows? Not anymore. Do you like games? Yeah. Not anymore. Crack in the wall? Not yeah, anymore. not anymore. Uh, that didn't really work for me, the whole crack in the wall thing. I thought that was a bit bollocks. Do you think? Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think it didn't necessarily, the dots didn't always join up. That last episode with Matt Smith, I didn't Which like one? it. The one where he regenerates into really? Capaldi. I thought that was one of the worst episodes of Modern Who. Oh, Sandy was in floods of tears. I was. A, I watched it with Eli, <laughs> and I was like, "Sorry, Eli, it's Christmas Day," because we were both we both spent Christmas Day together and had the flu, which he oh. brought. That was his gift for me. That was nice of him. And I remember thinking to say, "Do you mind if we watch Who? I know you don't like it." He goes, "Oh, I'll watch it." And we're sitting there and we're watching. And I'm like, "Oh, this is actually quite embarrassing. <laughs> this is actually quite awful. How all these plot strands are being jammed together in the end." And I turned to Eli at the end and went, "I'm sorry, that wasn't the best Who." <laughs> I know what you mean, but what I loved about the Moffat era and Moffat's episodes in general was how many ideas he'd just throw at them. Yeah. And sometimes he bit off more than he could chew, maybe, but I always appreciated them. I always found them really, really interesting, his episodes. In his era as a whole, because of just the sheer wealth of ideas. Russell T. Davis was very different, and his was so brilliantly beautifully sort of populist and he yes. got that it was Doctor Who Saturday night it's got to compete with what else is on on a Saturday night it's got to be a bit uh, showbiz jazz yeah, hands he got it uh, and Moffat I don't think it necessarily was was in the right place on a Saturday night in the Moffat era but that might be but possibly it was, my favourite era you know what it's, Matt Smith it's, I was never a huge fan of Amy oh really yeah uh, not because of the actress or anything like that but I just felt like because Moffat's got the pun thing going on, yeah, everyone has to have shot writing. Yeah, yeah. True. When every one of your cast member talks like that, it's like it becomes a bit much. And I found Amy to be a bit too much. I found that his uh, his women were all written the same. His female characters were all the same. All sassy. Yeah, all sassy. So, uh, Men were all a little bit pathetic, and his women were all kind of very confident and quick witted. Well, all kind uh, of like his characters from uh, Coupling. Yeah, that's how he writes women, and that's how he writes men. But. Uh, and yes, he did overuse kind of characters telling one another to shut up. You go yeah. through the Moffat era and count the number of times a character says shut, shut up. up. <laughs> it's like it's insane. Yeah. Um, but uh, but but for all that, just the, the sheer wealth of imagination, and I also loved what it looked like during the Moffat era. But Michael Ooh, Pickwell yeah, yeah, was yeah. the production designer during that time, and the the cinematography. I mean, the episode, the the Doctor's wife. Where the oh, yeah, yeah, comes yeah. Comes to life. It's so beautiful as an episode. And the snowman episode. You know that whole bit with the ladder going up to the clouds? Yeah, and the I mean, on the just, top? yeah, like a fairy tale. It yeah. was. He did the gothic fairy tale version. Well, he kind of did a bit of everything. He did a bit of Hinchcliffe yeah. stuff. Yeah. He did a little bit of Pertwee type stuff. Yeah. And he was the first writer to really properly deal with the idea of time travel in Doctor Who. Yeah, well, he loves his timey one. Yeah. He absolutely but, did. I, I don't know. I like Matt Smith. I like some episodes, but I think I prefer Capaldi just because as he ramped up, Capaldi was just like oh. knocking it out of the park. I, I like season one Capaldi where he's like a shit. <laughs> he's like he's like a real shit. The Mummy on the Orient Express <laughs> or whatever it is, is actually one of my favourite episodes, but it's not anything special, but it's just yeah, Solid Who. So, solid Who, done brilliantly. Yeah. And I like the whole time, 60 seconds and... Yeah, 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 yeah. And Heaven Sent is possibly Doctor Who's one of hit Moffat's finest hours. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. And I remember that, watching that and thinking, this is too good for kids' TV, this plot. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, Moffat, it was it was so sophisticated at points. Mm. Not always, no. but sometimes it was. And, uh, yes. And I cried when Capaldi changed 
Oh. Well, not when he changed, because he changed in the other episode afterwards when he was yeah. hanging out with the first Doctor, which yeah. is, yeah, it's all a bit nice. It's all right. But I like the fact that, you know, he was standing his ground against the Cybermen and the, both the Masters is pissed off. Yeah. And he was like, well, I've got to do this then. And he's being zapped and he's doing this. And I was like, yeah. Oh, he's, he's dying. dying he's probably being killed, isn't he? Yeah. Been it's good. Bashed up. Yeah. They've, they've never really been a bad Doctor. It's just like no. the script sort of it's, let them down. Yeah, that's what it boils down to. Yeah. I... I don't think any of them I would call bad as actors or whatever. It's just, no. you know, some have had better eras than others because of who's been in charge, ultimately. Yeah. And that's, you know, going to be like that on any show, isn't it? It is. But, you know, considering now Doctor Who is what, in terms of the 2005 at first came back? Yeah. So what, 15 so years like or so? Yeah. And so in the timeline, if you put them side to side with the original Who, yeah. We'd be in Baker era still no, at this point? We would be, yeah, late Baker. So late Baker. We're talking, we're talking the. the um, uh, what's his name Douglas Adams era oh yeah like, yeah. City, City of, of Death, Death and uh, Abandoned Sharder yeah Abandoned yeah, Sharder yeah. yeah see Push Goes to Shove Doctor Who is my favourite TV show of all time and that's not to say that I universally love everything no because I don't I like Doctor Who but I also realise a lot of it doesn't stand up and sometimes yeah, ideas but, are better than execution which is fine but, but it, it was the show for me that got me into wanting to work in TV Oh, fair enough. Because of the magazine, Doctor Who magazine, more than anything. Uh, because I love the behind the scenes stuff. In oh, fair uh, and it was like, oh, that's how TV is made. Uh, and that's how writing is done. Because they used to interview writers. And you never used to get the writers interviewed in anything else. No. Because Doctor Who didn't have the whole process like we do now with showrunners. Yeah. Because it was basically what, just a producer and the script editor. Yeah. And they had to keep things in order. Yeah. Whereas now it's like one head is the... Yeah. Which is still unusual in the UK. You don't tend to get that. No, and that was because they were trying to copy the Buffy thing. I... Did you ever watch Vic and Bob's take on yes, Rand the Hot Coat Disease? Yeah. You watched that season, those yeah. two seasons. It's like watching Doctor Who, yeah, yeah, yeah. and especially the very last episode of that, which is written by Mark Gatiss and yeah. I think it was Pemberton, I might be wrong, uh, I might be Dyson. I don't know, Charlie Higson wrote a lot. Yeah. Well, he was, he was the showrunner. Show he was the yeah. Russell T. Davis in many respects. Yeah. They, they, they set a precedent. And that last episode of Rod and Hotcock is pure Doctor Who meets the Avengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The inside the department store, the killer robots and things. Uh, I don't think I saw the last one. Oh, it's good. Uh, it's like a cross between Saw and the Avengers and stuff. Oh. Yeah. Cool. If you've never seen the, the Vic and Bob Rod and Hotcock deceased, despite their slightly ropey acting, yeah. uh, I'd recommend it. And I loved it. In it. He is. Yeah. He is. Yeah. And he's good in that. He plays what's his name, Wyvern or yeah. someone, doesn't he? A ghost. Ghost teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I have to say, I was th weirdly thinking about this this morning, is how lacking in ambition the UK is in terms of genre TV. Well, we never had the money to make it, really, when no, you think about I it. No, I know, but but it didn't matter with Doctor Who. You know what I mean? And Well, no, well the thing about Doctor Who is it... it... When you get past poetry, because all those shows in that era, the set in the early seventies, had that Avengers feel, yeah. you know, the the, the the persuaders and things like that. It had that look, and then when things and budgets were cut and everything moved into the studio, that studio look was what cheapened who, because they couldn't do the outlocation well, stuff. Well, yeah, as much. and but it was also it was going up against Star Wars by the end of the seventies. Blame the so, Americans, basically. Blame the Americans, but I'm more talking about. It's like when we do genre stuff in the UK, mm. uh, and I'm trying to think of something of, in recent history that, that sort of did it. All right, we've, we've got okay, yeah, that's that's going back to sort of mid mid noughties, isn't it? Well, like, that came out a few years after Who, off the back of. But once once in a while, we'll get something like. Did you see Merlin? Was a BBC drama that came in. The, oh yeah, the whole of Doctor Who. I went to the premiere of that, but bizarrely, I don't even know why I got invited, but I did. Mm. Uh, you went to the back door. door. <laughs> <laughs> I just snuck in. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the did you see Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell? I've read the book, that? but I didn't see the show. So good. So freaking good. So yeah. Good. I mean, you know, talking about you know budgets, didn't you know that was it was as lush. Yeah. As it Have you seen his dark materials? Get. Is that any uh, good? I, we we did start watching. We never finished it. I did enjoy it. Um, no, no, we stopped it. I was thinking of the other one, um, the the one with Tennant and um, no, Michael good G. omens, good omens. Yeah, we started watching that and we stopped we watching it. We were like enjoying it though. These so dark materials we watched the first one. It's all right, but the trouble I find often this is where I was going with, mm. with things like his dark materials and often with British genre TV. It's quite po-faced and serious. Yeah. Apart from Doctor Who, which kind of puts comedy in. 
And so I think sometimes comedy is, is it invites people in to the mm. characters and the world. And, and it takes the edge off the high concepts. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. As long as people are smiling and laughing and finding it funny. You know, it's what Marvel do very well with their shows. It's like they make them funny, you know, in their films. Make it funny and people will kind of overlook the fact you've got a guy running around in a blue... In know, a tunic or yeah, something. Tunic you know, or yeah, something daft like that. Uh, and all too often British genre stuff takes itself a little bit too seriously and kind of it's like, oh, I'm prestige. So you don't get stuff that's sort of so gritty and sort of dirty like I don't know, I'm trying to think of examples of American ones, but something like I mean, who's the 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 the, the one? Uh, what's the word? A thing against the opposite of the rule, the one that bucks the trend, the one that doesn't do that. Oh yeah, I know what you mean. But even then, even sometimes in the last couple of years with the Chibnall era, it's taken itself a little bit too kind of oh, I'm, I tell you I'm what, a drama. I I I have trouble with the Chibnall era, and not because I think it's badly acted or she's a bad doctor. It's just that there's something about the energy of those episodes that are lacking compared to Moffat and Dusty Davis. And it's strange because on the face of it, you look at those episodes and they're very recognisably who. Yeah. But there's something about the pacing and the, 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 this dialogue which makes everything feel like you're watching a period drama that has to drop in a sci-fi element there. For me, I loved the first series of Broadchurch. And Chibnall can clearly write yeah uh, that first series of Borcher particularly was was amazing telly uh, and he's clearly a good writer but I just think <laughs> he's not I think what what marks out both Davies and Moffat mm. is Moffat particularly you know came from uh, comedy and, yeah uh, and Russell T Davies has a, a clearly one hell of a comedic instinct I mean, he's yeah, very good like, with natural dialogue, yeah, natural yeah, humour. Yeah, but, but yeah, without kind of, he's not gag, gag, gag. No. But he knows how to make something funny and silly without it feeling forced. Mm. Uh, whether he, you know, and you watch that, like, I don't know if you saw his years and years. Um, oh, Rusty Davis. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and even he did um, a very English scandal with Hugh Grant. Which was brilliant as which well. Which is brilliant, but also at times really funny. Uh, you know, there were points in that where we laughed out loud and it's like, you know, it didn't, he, his writing doesn't take itself too seriously and so that, when you've got like, you know, a ridiculous concept in something like, like who, uh, um, you know, having someone sort of like laugh or kind of, you know, make a joke or whatever or not, it not take itself too seriously, it really, uh, it helps. Mm. You know, but when, I think sometimes with Chibnall, he treats it too much like a drama rather than a comedy first. Yeah. And I think that's the difference with Moffat and Russell T Davies the, the dialogue's funny some of the ideas are funny and you need it, it to make it Doctor Who that's how it feels like Doctor Who yeah and as I say I, it's a bit disappointing that she's leaving when Russell T Davies is she's coming brilliant. in I so I would love great. to have seen what Russell T Davies would have done with her for a season me too I think you know and I'm hoping if she hangs around for the 60th anniversary which she he's will. doing which she he's will. doing yeah he's doing um, I think that, she will that he'll get to back. write her because I think I th- I, yeah she, again she's bored her. she's great yeah uh, and she, attack the block, attack the block. She's yeah, great in that yeah. as well. Who, that generated quite a few stars. On, uh, the other guy went on to do. Yeah, star John Boyega. Yeah. Who would you have as the next Doctor? Oh God, that's really hard because I'd cast myself, <laughs> and I do these, and I do these. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. It's I so want, hard. I want Patterson Joseph, and I have done for years, and apparently he came very close a few years ago. Is it? Okay, so I like Pats and Joseph and things I've seen. Yeah. I don't think that necessarily means he'd be a good doctor. Did you ever see really? Neverwhere? Yeah, he was great in that. Yeah, that's, that's when the I problem. first thought that's, he's Doctor Who. See, that's the thing that told me that he couldn't do Doctor. Really? Because he's very theatrical, very stagey. And it, it, a big problem I have with British actors in general, and you see this in shows like Endeavour or, you know, the murder mystery things. Yeah. And that the actors they hire all come from those rep companies. They've all done the RADA or the speech therapy stuff. And they all come across as, like... The treating this TV show like it's theatre, stage right. work, and he comes across as an actor who is very capable, but feels more comfortable on the stage than on TV. I know what you mean. He's got a bigness about his performance. He follows me on Twitter, and I've never been brave enough to ask why. What are you going to ask him? Well, why, why do you, are you follow me on Twitter? Maybe he likes you know. Why is and Joseph follow me on maybe Twitter? Maybe he likes the Kids or Alien show you did or whatever it's uh, called. Cool. Kids or Aliens. I don't know. I don't watch uh, it. My <laughs> other my other choice would be Michaela Cole, who did. Um, I will destroy you. Oh, I may destroy you. I will destroy you. Yes, I was just trying to think of that. Uh, oh, the one who won she, the Emmy recently. Oh, yeah. my God. Uh, did she win the Emmy? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. She's amazing. She's so She'd be good. brilliant at it. Uh, I, I, it, 
Because she does comedy as well. Yeah, mm. you she's see, funny. You can see her making like the intense, serious stuff working and the funny stuff. Exactly. If I had to like comedy. retro pick an actor, yeah. do you know who I'd pick? Who? Gene Wilder. No, he's American. Sorry, I draw the line at that. I draw the line at that. Okay, we had a to space time. Sandy and I had a discussion about this the other week. We don't, you don't have an American as Doctor Who. Sorry. There are plenty of Americans in the universe. Just as there, are, there's a, there's a, there's a North in the space as well. Although <laughs> you haven't, seen, have you seen Midnight Mass on Netflix yet? No, I can't be asked. Why? What? What's so stupid thing to say? Two Whoa, reasons. Two so reasons, good. and you have to cut this out. One is I like Doctor Sleep, and I like The Haunting of Hill House. Okay. I thought The Haunting Haunting of Blind Manor was tedious. And I got yeah. into one episode of Midnight Mass and thought this is going to be ten episodes of nothing and one episode of everything. No, no. no. Anyway, there's a priest in that. Okay. Who's who is American? But he's. I said while we were watching it, he's the one American that I've seen that I'd go. I'd have a Doctor Who because he's. Oh, fair enough then. He's uh, a bit weird in his delivery, mm. but really intense when he goes through it but also sort of oddly charismatic and likeable okay that's alright then um, so he's got all ticks all those boxes likeable you could imagine sort of being his friend but also there's a little darkness there I'd at like the same see, time uh, and he Richard weird... E. Grant get another yeah. crack at it oh yeah. yeah the priest has a weird way of talking yeah well, really weird way of talking it's like he comes to an end of the end of a sentence and he doesn't pause he runs on into the next sentence oh okay yeah. but it's really magnetic yeah, the he does he some does big old monologues that are just like, yeah. whoa, he can do a Doctor Who. Yeah. I don't mind. The thing is, I'm not totally against an American actor playing yeah. Doctor Who. Because think about it, he could put on a British accent. Well, yeah. It's there the is actor, that. isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. like David Tennant's not English, but he put on the Estuary accent for things. That's true. He's yeah. the only Doctor to not use his own voice, isn't it? Yeah. Because even Sylvester McCoy was slightly Scottish, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah he still He'd lost it a little bit, voice. but it yeah, wasn't it's still strong. there. Yeah. Oh. I just wanted to ask you before you move on. So, if an actor is or the character is born in England yeah. and then moves to America later on, like Michael Myers. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Mike Myers, not Michael Myers from the Halloween. No, it's my, 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 Michael Myers from the Halloween films. <laughs> He'll be a great doctor. Just twitching his head. Uh, Kane Hodder as Doctor Who. I don't so technically know. Technically, they're English, but they just don't sound Brit- English. British, British, British dear. We've had two Brit- Scottish ones. Technically, they're British. But three they Scottish don't... doctors. We've had three Scottish doctors. Technically, they're British, <laughs> but they don't sound British. Um, yeah, mm. I don't know. There's just a, there's this Britishness about Doctor Who. As long as okay, maybe it's about the showrunner. Anyway, because I, I would like that priest. I it'd be great. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind the nationality providing they keep the character British, I guess. Yeah, or... the sensibility. It's about just having the sensibility. Yeah, because, like, it. I mean, look at, like, the TV movie Paul McGann. They really wanted to push for an American actor in that. <laughs> yeah. And he went with Paul McGann. And I think he, again, yeah. great choice. Well, you know, you say but... that. All the, they were all, in, all the uh, auditions were with British people. Yeah, but the point I'm going to make is they made the master American in that in the yeah, end with Eric Roberts. And people say, oh, he camped it up. And it's like... Did you not see <laughs> yeah, the whole of, you know, like the Peter... Who, it was Pertwee who basically had the most time with the master on and off, wasn't it? And yeah, then, and, and, then, then, and then he was back in the 80s as Anthony Ainley. And Anthony Ainley was the one who hammed it up. Big time. And yeah. he wore a wig. Yeah. Because he was... Yeah. Apparently he was a little bit odd. Who? Anthony Ainley. Uh, I guess so, though, because when you're known for that kind of role, <laughs> and I can imagine you would express that on the street if a little kid saw you. Yeah. Oh, it's the master. I'll destroy your planet. Also, yeah. do you want to see some puppies? <laughs> I don't think he was odd like that. No, I'm not saying he was, he was odd like that. He was odd how? I think it was quite private. No. Why is that odd? It is, isn't it? But private with the rest of the cast as well. Maybe he just didn't want to mingle because he thought it would affect the character. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I maybe he was a method actor. Methodist. <laughs> Methadone addict. Now it's time to rate, <laughs> rank the penises of the master. Okay. Well, we'd have the Misty situation, so that's out. That's sorted. Uh, John Sims has a nubbin. And I like John <laughs> Sims, but he has a nubbin. Delgado first. Yeah. Delgado first. And then Eric Roberts. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, Roberts second. Delgado first, Roberts. Um, uh, Sims... And then I'm saying Anthony Ailey, he's got a Oh, no, who's the, who's the master now? In the... Oh, Sasha Dewan. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, has, he, has, he has quite a big one. Yeah, I'd probably put him <laughs> just above the centre. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I reckon Anthony Ailey's one was like really like a little 
bean. Mm. In the little, it was, little, little, it was basically little belly just, button, an outy belly button. It was basically just a little glands. Yeah. <laughs> A little sa- a little sa- <laughs> you can see Sandra's face. This is great. Sandra, did you call her? Did yes, you just I call did. my wife Sandra? Why have I done that? <laughs> Look at Sandra's face. <laughs> oh. This is what happens when we talk about the penises of Doctor Who. And, and the masters. Yeah. I wish Davos has the biggest one. <laughs> There's been several Davos. I think he has the hugest one. It just wrapped around his legs below the Dalek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's why he has it. it's literally he why he's getting caught under the wheels. <laughs> Before that, he used to have just a wheelbarrow carrying it all around him, <laughs> like one big noodle pass with it. Ah, <laughs> oh. right, I hope you enjoyed this video about Merlin. It was great. By the way, there are yeah, six the modes of play. To... Well, it's a big, a really like it's tic tac toe. Still got time. There's a music machine. It plays music. No, let's just do that. To reach, to teach Merlin a tune, right, blah, 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 press new game and then press button two. New game. Buttons two to nine are the musical scale. Do, re, mi, so, fa, la, ti, do. Button one is sol, on one lower ac- octave lower. And right. Button ten is uh, high, re, one octave higher. Press button zero is pause. Every time you press it, it will pause a beat. So then I guess you just play music because it's got tunes in it. Oh yeah, and it shows you what ones to press. Yeah. How do you? The buttons aren't numbered though. How do you know what to play? Doesn't it have an inlay? No, that's all it's got. Can't Let's have a little it. look. Yeah, there's no numbers. So does it tell you what's what? So do you start at the top with one? It doesn't explain. Yeah, because what isn't that? Oh, hang on. No, it does show. They're little written in the corners. Oh there. my god. Okay, so. New game, one, and then we do what? No, that isn't it, is it? Oh, this is like lights out. I don't know. Hello? <laughs> Barbara? Cancel my four o'clock and move the meeting up from three. Thank you, dear. Yes, I'll have a coffee. Would you like one? No. Could you ask her who's got the biggest penis in Doctor Who? Barbara? Who has the biggest penis in Doctor Who? She's just checking. <laughs> One sec. And she says it's Colin Baker, and I don't know about well, that. I don't know. I didn't see that coming. No. <laughs> What's that? She says she's got literal first hand experience. Has <laughs> she now? Yeah. Of his sonic screwdriver. He didn't have one. No, he, he had, didn't. He had a sonic lance or something. Nor did a... Uh, Davidson. Uh, Davidson did have it for a while. And he got smashed in the yeah. visit, visitors. Or yeah. vi- visitation. McCoy never had one. No, he never had one. He didn't need one. He was too Machiavellian. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, Barbara, you can go. Notes. Sorry. Yeah, no, you can go. I love you too. That's it then. Well, thanks for watching this... Uh, this <laughs> episode about all about Merlin. <laughs> We'll see you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and all that stuff. And um, I don't know when this is going out, but our kickstart might be going still. Or if not, check out our Patreon. Patreon slash McCoy. Yeah, it's all down below. Don't listen to him. Just look below. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>